The skin is, is a vital barrier which separates us from the inside, to, you know, in terms of outside influences. And it's when the skin is abnormal that one realises how important skin is. When I first got this condition, I was like, what the heck is this? Is this cereal on me or what? And when was like, no, it's a condition called ichthyosis. Ichthy what? So as a barrier, it protects against infection. Uh, it, it's metabolically active so that it regulates temperature, it regulates fluid loss. When you're born with all your skin defective, it becomes a really major problem. So on um, school people they think that I'm a monster, but I'm not. I want them to know that it's really okay and you can't get it when you touch it, and yeah. In fact, there are only six other known sufferers in the UK, and there is no known cure. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another presentation, and today we are going to look at a certain congenital condition. Congenital means it occurs during the process of birth. I'm not here to freak you out or scare anyone. These are the things that happen in our world and people do get sick. So my aim is to teach not to freak anyone out. I want you to take a look at this before we proceed. And perhaps you might be asking yourself, what condition is this? You might not have come across it because it's a rare condition. The above condition is called ichthyosis harlequin. The name sounds are pretty complex, right? But that's why I'm here for you, to help you understand what exactly is going on. First of all, ichthyosis is a condition that causes widespread and persistent thick, dry, fish scale skin. Skin grows at a faster rate than it usually does. The skin of a person with ichthyosis is rough, dry and scaly and needs to be regularly moist. There are at least 20 types of ichthyosis. For example, ichthyosis vulgaris, lamellar ichthyosis, epidermolytic hyperkeratosis, congenital ichthyosis form erythroderma, and X-linked ichthyosis. But our focus today is ichthyosis harlequin. It is also known as ichthyosis congenital or keratosis diffusa fetalis. A collodion baby may ring a bell in their head. Ichthyosis means dry, thickened, scaly skin and is the most severe form of a congenital ichthyosis. It's an autosomal recessive congenital epidermal abnormality. Autosomal recessive inheritance is a way a genetic trait or condition can be passed down from a parent to a child. A genetic condition can occur when the child inherits one copy of a mutated gene from each parent. The parents of a child with an autosomal recessive condition usually do not have the condition. The term harlequin derives from the facial appearances and the triangular and diamond shaped pattern hyperkeratosis. The newborn's mouth is pulled wide open, mimicking a clown smile. This disquamation of uh, the epidermis that gives the newborn a characteristic and alarming appearance. These contraction abnormalities of the eyes, ears, mouth appendages are shown in the image, but we'll be looking deeper into this as we progress. Till the year 2019, approximately 200 cases of this condition had been reported. The incidence is calculated to be around one case in 300,000 births. Sex distribution appears to be equal and no racial prediction is known. A higher incidence may be encountered in cultures where parental consanguinity is common. What is the etiology? Etiology simply means cause. Mutation in adenosine triphosphate binding cassette A12 gene in chromosome 2Q35, abbreviated as a ABCA12 gene, underlie this disorder. The mutation may be homozygous or compound heterozygous. Mrs. mutation in ABCA12 gene result in milder autosomal recessive congenital 
ichthyosis phenotype such as a lamellar ichthyosis and a congenital ichthyosis form erythroderma. The ABC superfamily of genes encodes proteins that transport a number of substrates across cell membranes. ABCA12 encodes a transmembrane protein that mediates lipid transport and transfer to lamellar granules which are granules that originate from a Golgi apparatus of a keratin cyst in the stratum corneum. These granules are responsible for secreting lipids that maintain the skin barrier at the interface between the granular cell layer and the conified layer in the upper epidermis. So, in this condition, the ABCA12 mediated transfer of lipid to lamellar granules is defective. So, the lamellar granules are abnormal or absent. Normal extrusion of a lipid from these granules to extracellular space cannot occur. A lipid lamella are not formed. This causes a hyperkeratosis and erythromatous changes on the skin. What are the clinical features? First, on physical appearance abnormalities that may be notable on the skin. Large, severely thickened skin with large shiny plates hyperkeratotic scale present at birth multiple erythromat or yellowish in color on the eyes you will notice that at the free edges of the upper and lower eyelids are inverted leaving the conjunctiva and cornea at risk for desiccation and trauma we refer to this as a ectropion inversion of the lips may be notable we refer to this as a eclabia the severe traction of the lips and fixed open mouth which may complicate feeding. What about the ears? Ears are flattened with the absent retroauricular folds. The pinna may be small and rudimentary or absent. External auditory canal may be obstructed by the scale. What about the nose? Nasal hypoplasia and eroded nasal ally may occur. The nares can be obstructed. Hypoplastic fingers and toes. Flexion contracture of the limbs. Restricted mobility giving a coat of armor appearance. Clenched fist, swollen limbs. This may require surgical consult, and if not dealt with timely, may result to ischemic necrosis, gangrene, which may necessitate amputation or they may auto amputate. Temperature dysregulation. The thick skin may prevent normal sweating and normal sweat gland function and heat loss may grant to a halt. The infant is heat intolerant and can become hypothermic. Restriction of the chest wall expansion can result in respiratory distress, hypoventilation and respiratory failure. Dehydration from excess water loss can cause tachycardia and poor urine output. The central nervous system may be affected too. Metabolic abnormalities can cause seizures. Central nervous depression can be a sign of sepsis or hypoxia. Neurological assessment may be difficult due to restricted movement by hyperkeratosis. What are some of the complications? I might have mentioned some but no heart repeating. The affected individual may have breathing difficulties, respiratory compromise, impaired temperature regulation. In this case, the affected individual will suffer from, from hypothermia, dehydration, problems in electrolyte balance, for example, hyponatremia, which is high sodium levels, hypocalcemia, which is low calcium levels, hypoglycemia, low glucose levels, feeding difficulties, nasal obstruction, keratitis, conjunctivitis, limb or digital constriction and ischemia, positivity, poor hair growth, hearing impairment, developmental delays and impaired intellectual abilities, rickets due to vitamin D deficiency, hypothyroidism and juvenile idiopathic arthritis also can be associated with the ostium secundum atrial septal defect. What are some of the investigations? Mainly diagnosis depends on observable clinical features. Confirmation by genetic testing to see the mutation of her ABC12 gene on chromosome 2Q35 on single nucleotide polymorphism error technology. Prenatal diagnosis is made by analysis of fetal DNA obtained by chorionic villa sampling and amniocentesis. In terms of family history, diagnosis can be suspected or identified by ultrasonography, white blood cell counts, skin and blood cultures may be performed for signs of infection, serum electrolyte levels may be abnormal secondary to dehydration, severe anemia may be reported, check for hemoglobin level, 
check for blood urea nitrogen and creatine levels for signs of a renal failure. What is the management and treatment? Newborns with this condition require management in level 3 neonatal intense care. Neonates with this condition initially do not feel well, so they require tube feeding. Airway breathing and circulation stability should be assessed. Early intubation may be required. IV access may be required. Umbilical cannulation may be possible because of our difficulties in peripheral access. Premature infants may need humidifier incubator. Temperature should be monitored. Pain control due to deep fissures and opiates may help in pain management. Lubricants such as our ophthalmic lubricants to protect the conjunctivae. Infants are bathed twice a day with wet sodium chloride compress, followed by application of a bland lubricants to soften hard skin. Dilute bleach beds may reduce the risk of infection. You may give oral retinoids, for example isotretinoin or acetretin, terazotine. Also, you may apply topical retinoids, antibiotics to prevent infection, electrolyte balance by giving fluids, lubricate the eyes and protective devices to prevent or protect the eyes. Intravenous fluids are almost always required due to excessive water loss. This need to work with a multidisciplinary team there for consultation will be made among neonatologist, dermatologist, medical geneticist, ENT specialist, dietitian, plastic surgeon, physiotherapy and occupational therapy, ophthalmologist and uh, social workers. These patients may have compartmental syndrome, so dermal release to prevent ischemia and setting in of gangrene that might lead to limb loss. The infants are released from hospital when symptoms are improving or they are free from infection. Social and psychological support to parents and caregivers is advisable. Also advise parents and uh, caregivers that uh, the baby's appearance will improve after neonatal period. 